I had no idea why I was getting all these letters. It was so confusing. And then I tried to do the paperwork with my roommate. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> and then it didn't go through right or something. And I got more paperwork and like a bill. I am bored. What should I do? Ah, je vais. Hey guys, if you want to be notified as soon as a new Get Germanized video gets uploaded, make sure to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button. Thank you very much and now have fun with this video. Hallo und willkommen, ich bin Meister Lehnsherr and this is Manon, an American exchange student living in Germany and you're watching Get Germanized, eight things you need to know about life in Germany. So you have lived in Germany for quite a bit, right? Mm -hmm. And you've noticed a few things that you want to let us know, <laughs> me and them. Yes. <laughs> but uh, we talked about a few things beforehand, but we're going to go into more detail now. Uh, for example, the first thing that we want to talk about is German paperwork. Very different from American paperwork, or yes. the amount of it, at least, right? Yes. In Germany, there's a lot of paperwork for everything. It's all actually physically on paper, which really surprised me. And you actually have to go to all these different offices to get a lot of things done, mm. which is totally different from in the US, where I think a lot of things are online, and they're very simplified. Yeah. In Germany, you need to like fill out a thousand forms for something. Yes. It's really frustrating sometimes. Like even if you want to book a train ticket online, there's this whole ordeal that they put you through. Like even for an online form, I think it's quite a lot of information that you need to give them. Yes. Have you done that before? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I noticed that myself as well because I lived in Australia for a while and it was just so much easier there. Mm -hmm. So. And the offices are also not open very much. They're mm. a office lot hours, of, yeah. A lot of very important offices are only open from 9.30 to 11 a.m. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> um, maybe three days a week. It's so weird, isn't it? Like, you, like, and they tell you, oh, yeah, you need to hand that in by then, mm -hmm. or to that, uh, until that date. But then the office is closed most of the time when you're mm -hmm. at work or at uni or school or whatever, so how? Yeah, sometimes the deadlines are days when they're not even open. <laughs> yeah, that is so strange, isn't it? Like, yeah. They should consider that. Guys, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on, seriously? Really? <laughs> uh, but not only paperwork is a hassle, also the GEMA is a hassle in Germany. Well, many Germans know what I'm talking about. It is actually a fee you have to pay for being able to watch certain TV stations. And for example, if you have a radio in your home, then you need to pay it. Or if you have a computer with internet access and you need to pay it, they, they force it upon you pretty much. Yeah. You've noticed that. And it can be very confusing for exchange students, for example. I had no idea why I was getting all these letters. It was so confusing. And then I tried to do the paperwork paperwork with my roommate. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> and then it didn't go through right or something. And I got more paperwork and like a bill. Definitely, as soon as you get that paperwork, find some German person to help you with it and make sure you get it done. <laughs> didn't your friend have like this whole huge bill because he didn't know what to do. He just ignored the letters because he didn't know what it was. And then he mm -hmm. had to pay like 600 bucks initially. Yeah. And then they, they talked him down to like, or he talked them down to 200 euros or something. I'm not even sure if many Germans would actually pay that or respond to the letters. I think I have never responded to a letter like that. Don't um, say that, they'll find you. No, I think usually my, my roommates took care of that anyways, because mm, it, like yeah. I lived in a VG, a, a flat share, an apartment share. So you only need to have it once for the whole apartment, not mm -hmm. like for every single person. But even though my roommate has been paying it the entire time I've been living in the apartment, I've still been getting the letters because they hmm. don't realize oh. that she's my roommate. Oh, okay, yeah. Which is kind of odd, but our each room in our apartment has its own room number mm. even though it's one residence ah, okay. so our addresses are slightly different even though we're all living in the same apartment that could be the problem then. yeah just make sure to i don't know actually I, I can't really give advice good advice on this because many germans hate it they don't want to pay that but i guess if you want to stay out of trouble you should probably pay it another very annoying thing for foreigners and germans alike the sunday apocalypse Meaning that everything is closed on Sundays. Yes, if you don't do your grocery shopping on Friday or Saturday, you're going to be very, very hungry on Sunday and Monday morning. Yes, yes, yes. But I mean, to be fair, there are stores that are open, like little corner shops like kiosks or spätis or something like that usually are open. And also uh, fuel station, gas stations will be open. Yes. Not everything, but most things will be closed. And some stores even have offener Sonntag, open Sunday, mm -hmm. which means that they are open on Sundays. But it really depends. It's like a special thing they do sometimes. And a lot of times they're more expensive if they're open on Sunday. Yeah. It makes sense, but I mean, for Germany, it makes sense. Not for <laughs> other countries, probably. But for me, it's like it's not 24 hours. Are we living in the Stone Age? <laughs> What's going on here? It's Germany. Next up, German stereotypes. For example, punctuality. Germans are always punctual, right? Always. No. What? What? <laughs> what? 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 I mean, people make jokes about that, but I think 
that's not really true. I think I've noticed people even being late to their own office hours. That's bad. And buses are usually on time, but they do run late quite a bit. I mean, I have friends who are always late. You can almost always count another hour on top of the time they will say they arrive. Tell them seven if you want them to be there at eight, mm. for example. So not all Germans are punctual. Sorry to break it to you, but... <laughs> That's how it is. Next up, another stereotype, dress codes. Well, you might think that all the Germans here wear lederhosen and dirndl, but as you can see, I, I'm not doing that. And not many other Germans do that. So what do Germans actually wear? What did you see? Definitely, there's a little bit of a uniform. I think everybody wears jeans all the time. Um, and then either maybe boots or sneakers. Mm. And plain t-shirts or sweaters, long sleeve shirts or jackets. Not a lot of like Nike t-shirts. And people don't wear gym clothes unless they're actually going to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> Which surprised me. The first time I wore leggings or yoga pants to a class, everybody wanted to know if I was going to the gym afterward. <laughs> Which of course I wasn't. So I thought that was a little bit surprising. Well, I think yoga pants are slowly making their way into German culture. Which I don't mind. So that's a thing now. Huh? I, I really don't mind. Um, but, uh, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but yeah, it was for a long time weird. A little bit at least. Mm -hmm. Anything that increases your ability to stare at people's butts is probably a good thing. It, it is. Speaking about dress code, well, the dress code is a little bit different when it comes to like partying and going out in Germany as well. And the party culture is a little bit different in general, I think, right? Yes. Um, I think people dress not quite as much up when mm. they go out. Um, you won't see as many girls in like little dresses and stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is true. I mean, at least for certain clubs and bars, I think if you go to a really fancy R&B club or whatever, then probably that's different. But for most clubs that I've seen, for example, in Bremen, they just wear t-shirts as well. Also, like nicer things, but not as dressed up as, for example, I, I lived, lived in London for a while and they would dress up fancy or in Newcastle, <laughs> like sparkly dresses and stuff like that. It's different, definitely, I think. Where I'm from is more of a resort area in the US, so in the summer we wear a lot of short shorts and crop tops and mm. when I wore that in the summer in Germany I definitely got stared at a mm -hmm. lot. <laughs> well yeah I mean same for my friends from well Australia and also America mm -hmm. the US they wore like these really short skirts and like shoes without socks and my, my friends and my parents were like oh aren't they cold <laughs> like what's what's going on with that mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah so it, it, we definitely notice I'm not saying like oh you have to conform you have to do it you know it's just people will notice. Mm -hmm. People will comment and they'll probably stare at you. Mm. But some of them it's in a positive way. Some girls would be impressed that you're, you know, breaking the rules. <laughs> oh, breaking the law, breaking the law. Fashion rebel. Fashion rebel, fashion uh, criminal. <laughs> Not only the dress code in party culture is different, but also like the drinks that people drink. Yes, right. I think people drink probably a little bit nicer alcohol than maybe a lot of Americans, but especially younger people because it's totally illegal to drink when you're 18 mm. in a Germany, but you have to wait till you're 21 in the US. So younger people kind of drink what they can get their hands on in America, <laughs> but in Germany they can choose anything that they want. So I think they drink a little bit more wine and a little bit more nicer beer. Well, it depends on where you are. Definitely not here where I live in the countryside because <laughs> like at the Schützenfest, <laughs> at the Hunters Festival, uh, or the many different Hunters Festivals we have throughout the year, young people just drink everything whatever they can get their hands on for sure in the city it might be a bit different i'm not sure like cocktail bars are, in, are there obviously and all that kind of stuff that we don't have here so it depends on where you are in germany but generally you might be right i'm not mm -hmm. sure what do you think guys let us know in the comments below we definitely not be drinking rubinoff in germany rubinoff what's that <laughs> that is really really cheap american vodka mm, okay or i think it's american we have it in america it's super super cheap for american alcohol well we have cheap vodka as well mm -hmm. we used to drink this red vodka with uh, orange juice all the time. It's mm. like sweet and it makes it even sweeter if you put orange juice in it. It was, I don't know, I did, we just binged on that stuff back then. <laughs> I don't remember. We had party games and drinking games with that. I've seen Americans drink Reuben off with blue Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. so gross. That brings me to party games, like in party culture. I, are they different, similar? I mean, beer pong is obviously the American mm. drinking game, right? And in Germany, we have something called Flunky Ball. Do you know it? I don't. Really? I don't, I don't drink personally, so uh, I haven't played as many drinking games. Because of your gluten... <laughs> intolerance. I have a lot of food intolerances and alcohol makes me very sick. Which we will make another video about, like about the gl living gluten-free in Germany. So check that out. I'll link it in the video description as well. Anyways, Flunky Ball is a game that you play in a team. Basically, you could make a whole other video about that. Look it up 
Flunky Ball. It's the German drinking game, I think, or one of the main ones, especially for festivals and students. And last but not least, something very important. Iced coffee is different here. Yes. Well, at um, least a little bit. It's not as popular as it is in America. People will still drink hot coffee in the summer. Mm. So if you go into a German cafe and you see iced coffee in English, then what you'll get is iced coffee like you get in America. But if you see iced cafe, it's something totally different. <laughs> it's actually hot coffee with a scoop of ice cream in it. So maybe not what you're expecting, but maybe not bad. <laughs> no, it sounds nice. I'd yeah. like it probably. <laughs> but yeah, guys, let us know if you have any more points that well, people have to know about when living in Germany. What's like really odd what's like helpful to know about let us know in the comments below and like the video you know the drill like it's really helpful people underestimate it subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet you can find all different social media network links in the video description also how you can support this channel is in the video description all the helpful stuff we have merch everything actually i'm wearing merch right now there you go there you go buy it if you want <laughs> if not that's also okay anyways thank you very much for watching don't forget to get germanized goodbye and all Wiedersehen.